let's go through some of the, uh, the points on the two channel relevant to the lumbar and, and sacral spine. There's Du Wan, which is Chang Chiang, and it has about 24 other names. Go figure. It has so many names that it makes you realize how vitally important it must have been considered to the ancient Chinese. I mean, we hardly ever use it anymore. It's between your anus and your tailbone. So it's not a really friendly place to put a needle. It's not the place that you're going to like photograph and advertise on your, on your brochure for your acupuncture. <laughs> People don't want to know about sticking needles next to their butt. Um, but it used to be a very important point. It's a very important point in Taoism, in Taoist self-cultivation, um, where it has most of its names refer to the idea that something starts a journey which culminates at Governor Vessel 16, which is right around C1 at the top of your head. So, of course, it fits perfectly into that idea that is expressed in craniosacral therapy, that you've got this linkage from the tailbone to, go to C1 and C2. Um, for example, one of the alternative names of Governor Vasa 1 is Sao Shi Lu. Um, Sao and Shi were two of the seven judges in some ancient Chinese story about judgment after you die. Um, and Lu means the road towards those guys. And right here is Cao Xi, the point itself, which is an alternative name for Governor Vessel 16. So you've got the road to Cao Xi, and you've got Cao Xi itself right at the top. That's Changqiang Governor Vessel 1. Um, I don't really think it has any kind of element designation, except that it starts the whole process off. Uh, and then you have uh, Governor Vessel 2, which is between the sacrum and the tailbone and it's called Yao Shu. Is it called Yao Shu? It's called Yao Shu, right, people? You know? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yao Shu, right? Yeah. We are Yao Shu, I'm not hallucinating that. Yao Shu means um, means the shoe the, the shoe point of your of your lumbar area, of your lumbar spine and that, that, that whole area. But it has about fifteen other names. Again, super popular point back in the day. But Not used that much anymore. What point was it? Do one? Do two. Yao Shu. Do one is Chang Chiang, which means um, extension of power and strength. Right. Um, and then we don't have any do channel points in, in modern Chinese thinking until we get up to um, L4, and that's do three. Right? And do three actually was not defined until I think the tenth or eleventh century. That means it's a complete newcomer when it comes to when it comes to acupuncture points. It's interesting. They didn't even they didn't even go there until like tenth or eleventh century. Um, and it's a Yao Yang Guan, which is the the gate of the hinge of the of the of the waist, basically. Um, I don't have much to say about it actually, um, except that I believe that you can use any of these zones on the governor channel to, to access the energies, to access the five element energies. That's just my belief. If you want to do that, I believe you can go for it. For example, this extra point here underneath L5 is incredibly useful. Shi Chi Zui people call it, which just means 17th wacky point in Chinese, pretty much, um, or beneath the 17th vertebra. Um, is a very, very useful point. I think you can use any of the do channel points to address the element and organ energetics. That's just my opinion. But many of them have not been defined in Chinese medicine yet. Why do you think L5, why do you think that point is so useful? What do you use it for? It's level with that. Well, it's, the, this, this area here is where people's backs most commonly get messed up. Oh, okay. right? and, and quite often, Quite often, it's useful to work right there, right, right above the disc that's gone or atrophied or damaged or is, in, or is hurting or something. And we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about how to actually do that. We'll do some demo work and work on the, the governor channel, because there's very specific ways to needle the governor channel, um, and specific ways not to as well, potentially. Um, OK, so then the next do point we're, that is relevant to our story here is governor vessel 4, do 4. Now, Du Four is Ming Men, um, and Ming Men is the gate 
of your destiny. And it's at the bottom, because we've got the outer, outer back shoe line talking about the Shem, and then the last point on this outer, outer back shoe line pretty much is, you know, bladder 52, the house of the will, right? So right at this level of, of L2 is pretty much where we stop working with the Shen. It's the last point on the Shen, and it has to do with the will and destiny, right? Because if you don't have a will, you ain't, you ain't following destiny. Destiny in Chinese thinking is um, not something that is destined to happen. It is something that you need to live according to. Right? That's the mandate of heaven, is a more accurate description of the term Ming Men. It's a better translation, actually. It would be the mandate of heaven gate, or acupuncture point. The mandate of heaven gives you all this, like, um, gives you an instruction set. And as long as you're listening to yourself, you can follow it. But of course, you have to have your will in place, so that you go to bed on time, so that you don't, you know, do addictions, and so that you manage your psychological process and your spiritual process and so on. So, you know, it's a very significant area. It's also, from an acupuncture point of view, it's pretty hard to needle sometimes. <laughs> um, but that has to do with how the back starts curving up right there. Now, what's also interesting about the fact that this is such an important area, and the, and the end, in a sense, of the descent of the shed down into the physical, What's kind of interesting about that is that you, you've got a spinal cord that's coming down out of your, out of your brain, and the spinal cord um, has cerebrospinal fluid circulating in it. And the cerebrospinal fluid is moved by these little ciliated hairs that, are, that, are, that, are, uh, that move the, the fluid up or down and around and so on. And in, the, in a child, well, in an embryo, the spinal cord descends way down the spine. And then, and then as, the, as the embryo is growing, the, the spine grows further down past the end of the spinal cord. The spinal cord kind of stops growing, they're, they're equal. And then the spine just kind of starts descending down. And the point at which it, it, it's over, the end of your spinal cord, the end point from which the cerebrospinal fluid, this, this water force from your brain, can come down to is L2. In the average adult, it's right there, right at L2. That's the end of the spinal cord insofar as it's moving fluid, moving cerebrospinal fluid around. After that, the spinal cord just becomes the quarter equina, and it's just a bunch of nerve tissue and doesn't do quite the same thing. I think it's really significant that the Chinese kind of stopped the progression of the Shen line pretty much at L2 and said this is, this is the, sort of the final point, the point of the, of the mandate of heaven and that that's where in the adult body, um, in most people, that's where the spinal cord is going to stop. And the spinal cord is moving a fluid, right? The bladder channel is water. And the governor vessel is, is ruled by the kidneys. In, from the point of view of elements. This whole thing is a water force on some level. I can't say much more about it than that. There is one other um, do channel point that we need to pay attention to, and that's this one here, Governor Vessel 5, which is called Xuan Shu. And Xuan means pivoting, circling, or turning. And that might really just be an anatomical um, expression. <laughs> an expression of the functionality of L1 you know, relative to T12 that has a lot to do with rotation. And I don't actually have any sort of cogent comment about that, I don't think. OK. <laughs> so now what I want to do is put up a massage table and um, start to locate these points. And um, I'm going to get a little bit into you know, just some of the anatomy of the spine and in terms of working with people with massage and acupuncture and the sacroiliac joints and the hips because it's all it's all good stuff so let's get a massage table thank you do you think that one's big enough I actually yeah. don't know I've never put it up let's put it up and see yeah and then once I've done that then I'm gonna have you just work with partners and we'll put up lots of tables and, or you can also use the treatment rooms. We've got five treatment rooms with tables in. 
So you can go with a partner at the rooms and take some of these charts with you if you need to to help you. And, um, and we'll, we'll just explore the sacrum, the pelvis, and the lumbar spine.